What's up, my friends? My name is Benny, and you are now in the Chop Shop. Again, we're changing things up uh, each episode, it seems like, but I appreciate you guys being here. This week, I got my brother Eli back in the Chop Shop with me. I had a great time with him last time. And so today, we're going to talk about gifts and calling. It's kind of a big topic, but seeing Eli's background and being able to like kind of try different things, doing a little bit of everything, and having a lot of experiences feel like he could really speak to the topic. We had a great time talking about uh, just the gifts and calling and just kind of how that played in our own lives and kind of our experiences growing up in church and then also in the work world. So let's tune into this week's episode. So the episode that Eli was on, we did at my place. And it was funny because as you were setting up, you were like, you know, we could always do this at my house. <laughs> I was like, okay, I get it. It's, it was a lot of stuff. And I was like, yeah, okay. Makes sense. So now we're here. Now we're here. Yeah. yeah. Welcome. Thanks. Welcome Thanks. to my dining room. Yeah. This is still a chop shop. Just in my dining room. In Eli's dining room. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so I mean, you know, Eli's going to be on every now and then when he can, you know, uh, like we talked about, you, you own your own business and yeah. busy man. And on top of that, you assist your wife in her business. So like right. when Eli is available, then Eli will be here. <laughs> um, I wanted to share this. So last week we did the episode on, um, oh my gosh, comparison. Yeah. Right? Like not comparing yourself to other people. Um, um, and just kind of how you should kind of go about your business. And I got this really cool text from a friend, Joe, uh, and he said I could share this, and I wanted to share this because it's like this is the type of stuff I love to hear. Like I know that, you know, you can get kind of get caught up in like the numbers of like how many views I got, how many likes I get, how many shares, like because you're trying to compare to what. But stuff like this is what really drives me to keep doing it. He said, he's like, and he's talking about him, his son David. So this is my friend Joe. He says David and I were listening to your newest episode, and it opened up an opportunity for him and I to have a conversation exactly about what you're talking about. You're at the right place, at the right time, and you're a blessing. Thank you for providing the avenue for deeper conversations with our children. That's it's yeah, that's deep, dude. It, uh, that's and deep. and just to, just to know, like, oh shoot, like okay, so here's a father and son listen to the podcast, and you know, I always want the podcast episodes to not be like the whole discussion mm -hmm. you know i want it to be the beginning of a conversation that you the viewer listener are having with your own people you know and yeah. so like something like this is like dude this is why i do the podcast because i want to talk about things that maybe people usually don't talk about and things that should be talked about but again i'm not trying to cover everything Right. No, and I think that's a really cool role, especially since, you know, this is about a uh, father speaking to the son. Because yeah. then well, I think we talked about it, you know, yeah. too, with uh, when we last talked about, you know, like, oh, when we hear something from our wives. We don't take this seriously <laughs> yeah. from our friends. In the same way, like, too, like, how do I begin to have those conversations with my son without feeling like dad? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like feeling like the authority, right. the authority of things. Yeah. It's so, like, oh, put, put this podcast on. He's talking about it already. It's a perfect time to like ask about it, you know, or talk about it. So Joe, thank you so much for sending me that yeah. stuff like that. Like really this is the reason what drives me to do this. So like, um, you know, one of the things that, that have been happening in the last couple of weeks is, is this war between Israel and, and, and Hamas. Um, and it's really driven, uh, tempers high, right? A lot of uh, pushback, a lot of intense uh, debates and arguments online, in university campuses, uh, just everywhere, really. And I, I'm, this is not a political podcast. I don't, I don't really do that. Um, but I, what I, w I just wanted to like touch on real quick is just like you know, uh, it's it's kind of hard for you to see the turmoil right and not feel like some kind of like empathy towards both sides yeah. right the people uh innocent people who get caught in the middle of things um and there's a lot of that you know there's a lot of people who are kind of hurting because of what's going on and i just wanted to like say like hey like the idea of it's these innocent people versus these innocent people is kind of it's kind of silly it's kind of uh, just, 
I think we're looking at about it the wrong way. Um, I think, first of all, like, I think uh, whatever is going on in Israel is important. Um, and there's a lot of people who want to debate that, a lot of Christians who want to debate that. Um, but I, I, I think that it is important that we should look. And as, as Christians and that we are, we should be praying for Israel. Um, but that doesn't mean that we don't pray for Palestinians or we don't pray for people who are hurting or broken or lost or feeling afraid who aren't home right now because they had to leave, you know, like, no, like we pray for those people as well. Um, and so I don't know, I don't know if you've like kept up on it or if you, how much you've really like heard or, um, but I kind of wanted to just bring it up because I feel like it's something that is impacted, obviously, the world and something that you can't really avoid talking about, something we shouldn't avoid talking about. Um, but anything you want to add to that? Yeah, no, I mean, I think as you continue through life, I think, you know, war becomes, um, it, it just keeps coming back up, yeah. right? And, and I think it is, it's really hard to have those conversations because I think too often, um, we see them as institutions so that we can say, oh, good guys, bad yeah. guys. And we don't see it as people, right? And right. we as people are very complex. I mean, just between, um, one Christian and another, you may have, uh, lots of different, uh, views on things or priorities on things right. or, um, you know, whatever it may be. And so... Um, I, you know, I, I don't, I probably don't know as much as I, I should, yeah. um, in case, uh, in, in my case, I mm. probably don't know as much as I should, but at the same time too, like I've always been open to having conversations with people and always really wanting to get to like the heart of, of where someone's, um, passion lies. Because obviously if, if it's something that they're vocalizing, it's something that they feel is very important to them. And so I don't want to miss the opportunity of dis you know, uh, um, dismissing someone's yeah, um, sure. passion or dismissing somebody's, uh, um, you know, thoughts about something. And, uh, and it just gives us a, a better opportunity to be able to, to know that person just a little bit better. And yeah. So. I, I think like it kind of, and again, this is why I bring it up because I don't think it's ever really a healthy thing to avoid real life things that are happening. I, I think that that, like, I, I understand that it's very uncomfortable. You don't want to uh, get somebody upset or you don't want to be in an argument or debate. But I just feel like the idea of like, oh, I'm just not going to say anything because I don't want to make people upset is kind of, th there are times where I understand, but like, if that's just like your default and you do that all the time, like that becomes really unhealthy. Like, I think yeah. it's important for us to have conversations and talk about the differences and ask the hard questions. Like, is this really, you know, does this really mean what it, what I think it means? And, 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 you know, all those questions, just all the difficult questions that come with situations like this, uh, honestly, ones that we don't have time to answer today. And honestly, I don't feel comfortable in answering. I mean, I, I'm talking about it because it's happening and, um, you know, it's something that I feel as a Christian, again, I need to pray for. I don't want to ignore. I need to pray for it. Um, I, I, I believe that what we're seeing is, um, is like physically is the battle spiritually that we know exists, you know, the, the, between good and evil. Um, but when we see it physically, it becomes harder. It becomes hard for us to like kind of wrap our mind around it, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I just, I want to encourage everyone out there, like pray, you know, I mean, I think that's all we really can do, especially us, you know, two guys in California. I mean, there's not really much we could do other than pray and hope. And, and we believe that God will, will step in and will bring peace and, and he will work it out. He has a plan. I don't know what that is, but he does and it will work itself out. So now I didn't bring you on this week's episode to ask you all the hard questions about oh, okay. political uh, things going on and, and wars <laughs> and battles. Um, but I'm really excited because what I want to talk about today is something that I feel like you could really speak into. And that is a topic of like gifts and callings. Uh, or your gift and your calling. Um, so I put up a poll on my Instagram, and I was sharing this with Jana earlier. Um, and so I put up this poll, and I'm just going to read it straight off of my my uh, Instagram uh, because number one, if you're not following me on Instagram, you should at Benny's Chop Shop Pod <laughs> on Instagram. Quick plug. Um, yeah, but here's so I put up a poll and I said, um, "Have you discovered your gift slash calling in life?" And here were the three options of the poll. 
I found it and using it. Yes, but I don't know how to use it. And the third one is I have no clue. And so at this moment right now, um, 44% said I found it and using it, which is great. 11% said yes, but I don't know how to use it. And then the other 44% say I have no clue. Hmm. Um, which I feel, th- I mean, some people answered on that poll that I was kind of shocked by. Like, wait a second, you don't know, you don't have any clue what your calling is. And, you know, I guess like kind of where I want to start this is when, when, when the calling, Okay. Your calling. What is what is what does that mean? Like, what is the definition in your mind when someone says your calling? Like, what is what is that? That's that. I thought you said you weren't going to ask me. Any oh, questions. sorry. I, asked, <laughs> I, I told you I was going to ask you political uh, or war. Oh, questions. okay. Yeah, yeah. But um, the spiritual spiritual questions. Yeah, yeah most sorry. definitely. Um, no, I, I think it, it is very well. This, I think, should have some context for us. For we sure. both come from a, a Pentecostal background. We do, yeah. So um, very much, um, at least in, in our church, it was very much kind of... And I think in s- most settings, I would say most settings, there's like kind of like the big three, right? Where it's like, are you a teacher? Are you a preacher? Yeah. Are you a worshiper? Yeah. And those are like your yeah. callings, the right? main three. They're essentially like spiritual vocations, Right, they're roles that are meant to kind of lift up the church and um, and encourage and bring people through ways of the gospel. Mm-hmm. Right, and so the while I I do believe in in that, yeah, um, I think it is a little bit more complicated than that because I think, like I said, in the Western church, we've. De- designated those as kind of the big three. Yeah. And so it doesn't surprise me that it's a completely even split on I have it and using it and I don't know. Yeah. Because I think it's very easy to kind of second guess those because, you know, um, churches can be very kind of program centered. And if you're not fitting within one of those programs or you don't really feel like you're doing, you know, like, or if you don't feel like what you're doing is very important, then you can kind of just feel like, oh, well, this isn't my calling. I'm yeah. just doing this because they're asking me to do it. Right, right. Like, so, yeah, you, you're right. Like, growing up, we understood those three as the big three. If you were anybody that had a, and this is, again, this is the perspective. If you had, a, if you were somebody who were serious about what God wanted you to do, you had to fit in one of those three. Hmm. There was no other option, right? Like, if you're taking God seriously, that means you're looking at one of those three. Um, so in our case, like, you know, you're a musician guy working your way in. Like, a lot of people wanted to pigeon put you into that worship, right? And then for me, I, I couldn't sing. So <laughs> it was either teaching or preaching, right? And I did both. So, like, um, so, yeah. But, I mean... I, you know, you also hear the the definition or the idea that, oh, well, your calling is what God is calling you to do, and that is to reach the lost and baptize them, making disciples. Like, that's your calling, right? And, I mean, if if I were to sit here, I would say, yeah. I mean, I think that is that is the results, result that we're looking for. Like, that's that's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to bring people to Jesus and teach them and help them and turning them and, you know, teaching them and like bring them up as disciples. Um, but it's just interesting that so many people are like, I have no clue what my calling is, yeah. you know, like almost like I, I don't know where I'm going I, or not, not, I wouldn't say that. Like, I don't know, I don't know yet that thing that God is calling me to do. Hmm. Right. And so I also tied in gifts in there. Right. Yep. Um, and I think it's important to say that, you know, although we we're talking about three things, there's more than just those three when it comes to functions, like gifts, yeah. um, you know. And I w- let me just read this first real quick. And I know that we're kind of like beating this over the head as far as like from a church perspective. I do want to broaden that a little bit because I don't because this doesn't just apply for the church. I don't believe that it does, although it does help the church. So 
these are the gifts, right? Like uh, now, uh, this is Ephesians four eleven. It says, "Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church: the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers." Right? Like now, again, we're talking about functions. We're talking about um, lanes, or we we touched on three, but th- these added two more, right? Evangelists and po- uh, apostles. Um, and again, we grew up in a church where. Apostles wasn't really a word that we use yeah. to describe somebody, but now being a part of a church that there are a lot of people that their background was that they used. So there's a lot of new things that I'm like, it's different. Give, give me a second. That's a little different for me. But um, I, I say that to say this, like I I grew up, this is, this is the way I grew up thinking is that I'm called to be a pastor. And if you were to ask me, Ben, what is your calling? I would say, I believe I'm called to be a pastor. Mm-hmm. Um, but because of my upbringing, in my mind, I always looked at it like, well, how I, how I see pastors. So a senior pastor, like suit and tie, preach on a Sunday, making visitations throughout the week type of pastor. Um, if you ask me now, it's a little bit more like uh, just... In, in in my relationships and conversations with people that have been brought into my life mm. type of pastoral, like, you know, and I've had friends tell me, like, dude, you should be a pastor. And I'm like, well, I kind of feel like I am. Like, am I ordained or is that my official title? Is that my job? No. But, like, in my calling and my gifting, I feel like that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and so, like... Well, let me ask you, because I don't think I've asked you, like, do you feel like you know what your calling is? Or do you feel like you know, let's put calling aside, because I feel like that is a broader, Yeah. as far as your gifts, like, do you feel it's something that you not only know your gift, but you're using your gift? You know, I, I, that's a really good question. Sorry, more hard questions. No, no, that's, no, that's a really good question, because... Again, I, I think there's portions of me that's like, oh, yeah, well, I'm good at music or yeah, I sing yeah. and I do that. And as I, we talked about this when we talked about in the podcast, as I was in full time ministry, I found that it was less usage of my actual gifts that I thought I was going to be using. Yeah. And more so gifts that like just kind of grew from that position. So, like, I felt like my organizational and my pastoral. Um, gifts grew at a time where I thought like, oh, like my main job is like music. So I need yeah. to be a better musician or yeah. I need to be, you know, a better of this or better that. And so like for me, like when I think of gifts, I think of like, how did God create me uniquely? Like what were the things that g- good or bad <laughs> that, that, um, that I feel like really resonates like with me? Yeah. And like for me, like what I found um, is one of the gifts I really have been loving to use is like listening, like really trying to be an active listener, to ask pointed questions, to really get to kind of the heart of uh, of somebody. And that's not like, I guess there's there, there's a, you, if you go through like, um, oh gosh, now, now it's on the spot now. I think it's, uh, <laughs> I think it's... Um, first Peter that talks about, um, the, the different gifts of the spirit, but, um, um, but you know, and, and, uh, using that and, and wisdom and it's like, those are one of those things that like growing up, I never would have thought like that would have been like my thing, but like now just kind of growing up and, and experiencing the things that I experienced being in the places that I was like, those were the things that I was like, you know what, this is actually like pretty important to me. Yeah. And yeah. it defines me more than just the other things. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm actually kind of interested because I, I know you talked a little bit about it, about kind of like how you transition from what you thought was a traditional pastor role into what you are now. Yeah. When did that happen for you? I think, I don't know. So I don't know if it was necessarily like a moment that I could be like, this is when things changed i think it was more like me that changed like my perspective or view on it because like growing up when i was younger like i very much tried to put myself there oh i was with you you know so i was 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 like 
you know, I need to be there. Yeah. That's my calling. I need to be, you know, I need to be in those conversations. I need to be in that position or, you know, so, and obviously like I learned the hard way on, on just how that's not how that works, you yeah. know? Um, and so it really humbled me to a place where for, for a season I was like, it's not for me then, you know, it's not where I'm supposed to be. And it wasn't until probably in the last like few years that I'm like, you know, maybe, maybe it's not so much that I'm not called. Maybe it just looks different than what I thought it was going to look like, mm-hmm. you know, and, and a lot of it has to do with not being in the same denomination anymore, being a part of a different church, right? Different, different type of church. So like, obviously like, you know, it's not something that, looks like what I was in before. So it, obviously I have to adapt to that as well. Um, but I, I honestly, I just look at just what's going on in my life, who's coming in my life, who's not the opportunities I'm being given, the ones I'm not. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I'm saying that saying like, there's opportunities that are not given. And I'm like, I feel like I should get those, but I'm older now. And instead of like, trying to find out, Hey, so like, uh, you need some, you know, I'm, I'm just like, you know what? Like, I'm just going to be uh, this thing that I am being given. I'm just going to do the best I can and be faithful with it and do it with joy and put all that I have in it. Like whatever comes of it will come, whatever it won't, won't. And just trust that God will do whatever he needs to do. Um, so I think for me, it's, it w- it's been a lot of like, I need to just accept of where I am right now in my life, yeah. you know? And, and I think we, uh, I had a friend, I had a friend visit, um, should I say his name? Maybe, this person. Maybe I shouldn't say his name. No, say his name. I have my friend Omar. <laughs> he visited. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Omar. <laughs> he visited. This is like a few weeks ago. And uh, I love Omar. He's, he's, uh, he's a little bit younger than me. Um, uh, I'll say this, a lot of the things he's done, I've done some of those things. A lot of the things he's done are the things I wanted to do. Hmm. Right. And so we're sitting there in my living room and, uh, we were having a conversation about ministry, you know, and it kind of just hit me, you know, cause I think he had said something like, Hey man, like we're, you know, we, we see you and Ruth and you guys are doing great and we're happy for you guys. And, uh, it just kind of hit me like, you know, Ben, like, and I was talking to myself, you know, like I, maybe you're not supposed to be there right now because you got young kids, Hmm. you know, and a life of ministry like that, that just is like, is like full time and traveling and doing a bunch. It takes a lot away from family time. It, It does. And maybe, and, and this is me telling myself this, maybe God doesn't want that for you. Like maybe he, maybe he can give it to somebody else because of how someone is built and, and, and maybe it, you know, that's the grace that's been given, but maybe that grace isn't for you, that you could do that right now, right now, right? And so th- again, it's just like these, like, and I, I don't just say like internal conversations, but like the Holy Spirit speaking to me, like revelation from God, like, dude, be cool with where you're at right now. Like God is in the middle of it and this is just your role right now. So that, again, I wouldn't say it was necessarily like, oh, it was this time when everything flipped. It was more like me that changed, yeah. you know? It is really interesting because I feel, at least us growing up, there was kind of like a formula to get to that. So like if you felt like I, I'm called to be a pastor, you could basically put out a plan to kind of make that, okay, well, then that means, like, I probably need to start with helping out in the youth. And maybe I'll yeah. speak at the youth service every now and again. And maybe if those messages are good, maybe they'll have me preach at, you know, the main service. And then I can maybe take over, like, a home a home group, yeah. you know, and be part of that. And then maybe from there, I'll get on to be an associate pastor. And then from yeah. the associate pastor, if they kind of... And it very much becomes this kind of structure of, of how to get there. Now, I think... Um, some people have taken that route to become pastors. I know a lot of people that became pastors that they did not take that route at all. Yeah, they were either right. kind of um, put into kind of that position, or it was kind of taken upon them, um, or you know they 
it was one of the last things they ever thought of being, and then they ended up becoming kind of a, a, mm-hmm. a lead pastor. And I think about the disciples, right? And kind of like, yeah, you know, following Jesus. There was so much that was just being pushed on them. <laughs> there was yeah. no, you know, you have to remember for like for them, there is no New Testament. There is no rules. They are learning everything like as it comes. Yeah. They're following Jesus. They're failing and they're succeeding and they're jockeying for position and they're trying to figure out what's important to Jesus because if they find out what's important to Jesus, then maybe they'll be important. And it ultimately ends up being that like Jesus dies, he meets with them, he sends. And then now it's just kind of like, okay, like it's all back to square one. Yeah. God's going to provide everything that we're going to do. We're just going to be faithful to what he called us to do. And we each have a direction that we need to go. We're going to have interactions with people. Um, you know, uh, um, some that maybe Andrew's going to have better interactions here than, you know, me, Matthew over here, yeah, or, yeah. you know, uh, you know, Bartholomew over here, whatever, you know, whatever may be the case. Um, and I think we've, we've lost a little bit of that. Mm-hmm. I think like very much like there is this, like this calling does become tied to kind of a local ministry, which is great. Don't get me wrong. That's, that's great. You should, I think you should definitely be involved in your local church. And, and I would, I would also say, um, be involved or at least acknowledge and pray for the churches around uh, your area as well. I yeah. think too often we get kind of caught in our, in our own church there. But um, but I think like it's it's important to kind of get back to that. Like getting back to like, I'm just going to do what I feel God is calling me to do yeah. using what I feel is like my gifting or my passion or even, you know, um, yeah, or my gifting or my passion and doing yeah. that um, in a way that, you know, that God will eventually open the doors. And I think seeing you, you know, growing up with you and then seeing you through that journey, I, I mean, I, I remember like it just being so frustrated for you because it just felt like you just, <laughs> and we would have conversations. It just felt like you kept hitting like the glass roof. Like yeah. you just kept on, you know, like just, it's like, oh my goodness, you're so close. Like I can see it. Like yeah. I see this for you. And now to hear that you're like, yeah, you know what? I'm happy where I'm at now. Yeah, I know. It's is, crazy. It's it's wild. <laughs> yeah. No, it's crazy. Like, I even surprise myself sometimes, like, wow, I'm actually okay with this. Like, I'm not. And again, this isn't like, I'm a completely different person, you know, because there are moments I'm like, come on, God, like, I can do this. Like, give me an opportunity. Like, bring an opportunity to me. I can do this. Or, look it. Last week, I talked about comparison. Guys, I don't bring topics on here because I feel like I need to teach you on them. I bring topics on here because these are things that I deal with. So when I'm talking about comparison, it's because it's something that I deal with. Uh, It's something that I, at moments, struggle with. That I literally will sit there and look and go, well, that guy doesn't have anything more than what I have. Why can I, you know, why does he get that and I don't? Like... These are things I struggle with. So, like, there are moments that that comes for sure. But, but like, I'm finding, like, great peace in just where I'm at. And, again, really what it was, an eye-opener for me was, like, look, I don't believe that God is saying no. I just think that he's saying, just hang on a second. Like, there's a, something here I want you to get, you know. And if that's to enjoy my kids at a young age... And and still be faithful in the things that I'm being given, then, all right, I'm gonna do that, you know, and trust that God will work it out, you know what I mean? So, um, one of the things that you said in the beginning that I feel like is, again, we're talking about gifts. Do you know what your gift is? Calling. Do you know what your calling is? Again, forty four percent people on the poll I posted said they have no clue. Um, And one of the one of the things I want to touch on is. And again, this is going to broaden it out outside the church a little bit, which I think is, again, okay. I think this is a good thing, is the idea of like getting pigeonholed to that one or two things that you can do at the church, like rather than taking chances, rather than um, trying new things, doing different things. Um, again, this is why I think you could speak into this because you did a n- numerous of different things uh, that often 
pulled you in different directions. Like, it's kind of hard to find something, kind of hard to find your gifts, kind of hard to find that calling in your life if you're if you're not trying things, you know? Yeah. Um, and even trying things that don't necessarily excite you or bring out passion. You know, everyone says, follow your passion, follow your, you know, follow your passion. What is your passion? Go do it. Like there's a lot of people that have no idea what their passion is. They have no idea what they enjoy doing. You don't know that you're going to enjoy doing something until you actually enjoy doing it. You know what I mean? Like you, there's no way to know that, Hey, you know, I really like cutting hair unless you cut hair or I really, I really enjoy doing photos until you are in it and doing photos. So like just the idea of like opening yourself up to trying new things, trying different things, again, not just the church, but sometimes that means trying a career change, right? Sometimes it may mean um, a new group of friends. Sometimes it just may mean a change in your life. Um, But what do you think? Like as far as like trying to find your gifts I'll hit that from both sides. So I think the easier one is like trying things that, you know, you you wouldn't normally do. Yeah. And I think, you know, especially for anyone that is in high school or into college, that's what they say. College is all about, right? Like, yeah. you'll never truly know your major until you're ready to graduate, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. And, yeah. and maybe there's some college students that are watching that kind of understand that too. Maybe you started as like a creative writing you know, major and ending now in business because you're not exactly sure what you want to do. And I think there's, there's something to that for sure. I think a lot of people have found, um, kind of that, that, uh, that passion in their life, um, in just odd ways, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, I knew a buddy, like he just loved detailing cars. And I'm like, for me, it's like, dude, that, that's, yeah. that's not like, <laughs> but for him, it was like, it excited him. He loved cars. He loved like just having the appreciation of like, okay, cool. Like this is done yeah. kind of thing. And it was one of those like summer jobs that just like he fell in love with. And yeah. now that's what he's doing. And he's happy doing that. Yeah. I think the other side of this is thinking that the things that you love aren't important or they aren't a calling or a gift. I can't tell you how many times like someone's just like, oh, you know, I'm an accountant, you know, like I like numbers, like I'm not exactly sure, like, you know, the, everyone looks to the, towards the creative space. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm not yeah. really creative. I'm like, dude, <laughs> I can't tell you how many like blessed saint accountants there are out there yeah. that are like double checking on the church's books, that are yeah. finding loopholes for them to be able to give more, that are writing off, you know, like lawyers. But like they're passionate about law, but they don't really see, you know, what it's worth, you know, to a church or to a ministry or towards something else like that until there's an acquisition of a building or there's, you know, new bylaws that are being written. They're, you know, making their way onto the board. Mm-hmm. I've seen some people, this has been really cool too, have have really um, uh, dived into rehab facilities having a heart for for um rehabilitation and for getting people right Mm -hmm. and then i've also seen on on the other side as well people that are um trying to bring people back together so um it's uh, some churches call them kind of like a like a, a mercy um uh, ministry or something, but a way of reconciling, having right, essentially a, right. a, a gift of reconciliation, which are one of those things where it's like, it's easy to say like, well, I'm not exactly sure how that's supposed yeah. to fit into this whole, but God made you that, you know, gave you that gift for a reason. Mm-hmm. And, um, why I think it's easy to say, like, well, just be creative and trying to figure out how to do it to the church. I think he very much shows you, uh, in a way you know, how, how he does that. And so, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've like, um, you know, I started this job, like I got a promotion at work. I think I started back in July. I started training for like in January and, uh, it's like a, it's a logistics coordinator, right? So my job is just to build routes for the trucks to drive. Um, anything that has to do with like transportation of our product from one place to another is me. And, you know, at first I was like, well, you know, it pays more money. So, sure, like, I'll, I'll do it. And uh, since I took it over, like, I'm like, dude, this is actually kind of fun. You know, are there stressful days? Oh, my gosh. There are stressful days. Um, but I'm, what I'm finding is that my ability to communicate 
via email, via telephone, um, like kind of being like just efficient with my communication when I need to, but also m- the uh, positive, encouraging, Caleb, no, positive, encouraging, <laughs> positive, encouraging t- tune, uh, attitude tone. that I have, yeah. tone. Um, it, it, it makes for like a great mixture for like somebody in my position because literally my job is I'm on the computer and I'm on the telephone all day. Just working through problems, helping the driver out, talking to the customer, talking to other people. Like, and so, and I'm really enjoying it, you know. But I'm like, you know, these these gifts that I have, like, I I have a gift of communication. Like, I feel comfortable speaking in front of public. I feel comfortable speaking to people, communicating. Um, I do. I'm also very encouraging. I have a positive look at things, and so I also, which I didn't know this, but I enjoy problem solving. I really do. I enjoy being hit with a problem and trying to figure out how to solve it. Um, and a lot of that, I can like make connections to, oh, well, that would make sense because of this. But, you know, if I would have never accepted this job, I wouldn't have like started, like, I wouldn't even say like discover these new things, but just find these other clues about who I am as a person, the things that God has given me, the gifts that God's given me, and Again, I, I I just say that because I feel like a lot of times we pigeon our whole ourselves into like, well, I'm this. This is what I do. So like, you know, which like you said is fine. There's people that you know. By the way, one of the positions or people type of people at church that are way overlooked and it and everything that I've noticed at my church, I'm like, they got a big hand in that is admin people. Huge. 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 Like, if you have an ability, like a skill, a gift at, like, organization and learning how to, like, you know, take a thousand names and being able to, like, you know what I mean? Like, anyway, Adam and people (laughs) are the real MVPs. I just want to say that. Seriously. (laughs) Seriously. I'm, like, I'm so blown away at how much they do and how, how much of the success of the events and, and the, the special things that go on at church is because of how well they do their job. Yeah. So I just got to say that. Shout so out. admin. So if you like organizing and, and being an admin, like there's, again, God can use that gift for sure. Oh, most definitely. Um, but again, I'm, I'm saying all this to say, like, I think that taking on new, new opportunities should not be overlooked, you know? Um, and, it's okay to kind of step out of the box a little bit every now and then. And and again, we're not just talking about church. We're talking about work too, you know, like maybe taking on an extra duty at work, but isn't necessarily in your job title, just trying it, you know, like asking your boss, like, Hey boss, can I like do this for a little bit? Cause I just want to, you know, maybe they'll let you do it. I don't know. Like what that comes for, like for your gifts, right now calling, I'll say this about calling is that, it's kind of hard to be, I don't want to say satisfied, but like feel like you found your calling and being and thriving in your calling if you don't like back up and look at the big picture, mm-hmm. you know, if we're, because sometimes we're just so focused on what I do. I'm a, I'm a preacher, I'm a musician, I'm a, I'm a pastor, I'm a admin person. And you're just so focused on that one thing that you miss the forest for the trees. Like you completely miss the bigger picture because I think what makes when you find your calling, your place, your role in the body, what makes that special is when you realize I'm in the body. Like there's a bigger picture. It's not just me. Yeah. You know? And I feel like for the people that said like, I have no clue what my calling is like, take a look at the bigger picture at this thing we call life, this big picture and and look at even though your your spot your role is important like how much of how how big that picture is like there's a bunch of other things that need to go and work right that God is like just you know orchestrating together to make to make everything work you know it's more than just you yeah um yeah Lincoln Lincoln Brewster had this great um quote I was talking with Lincoln 
Oh, were and, you? Uh, <laughs> no. I oh, was, that's cool. I was in the same room as Lincoln, though. Name drop. Um, but he had <laughs> said, you know, like, as far as the church, he tried to take a big picture philosophy where if the worship was great and the sermon was great and, you know, the ushers were doing great, but the children's ministry wasn't, you know, wasn't doing well, it wasn't a good service. Yeah. Right? It was, it was very much kind of like this connective, like, um, and I see this now, especially, too, like, doing weddings as, like, part of a, a wedding vendor, like... Our job should really be that everyone succeeds because right. when everyone succeeds, then everyone's job becomes easier, yeah. more fun, and more effective. For sure. So if we were to carry that route of like, okay, what is my part? Where can I be assisting others in my part? Not just always looking for what I need. Yeah. And this can be something as simple as, you know, like stacking chairs. You know what I mean? Like talk about the real MVPs. I was doing, you know, set up and tear down service for like two, yeah. two, three years, setting up chairs, tearing down chairs, tearing down pipe and drape, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Those people, like, there was just one of those things. Like, you came to church and everyone just thought like it was just prepared already. And so I always tried to make it a mission to like a. They're always going to be one of the first people to know about it before we announce something to church. They know about it, you know. So that they know, like, I value, you're important. Yeah. I want you to know this kind of a, a, about it as well. But then just having those moments, too, of like, you know what? I'm going to grab a couple of stacks. Yeah. And while you're doing that, let's let's chat. You know, like, how are things going through the week? And I had some, like, really powerful and depth conversations and, and really having a, a better view into what's going on in their life that I never would have if I had not looked outside of myself. Well, granted, I was tired. I yeah. could have gone home. You know, it's a long day already as it is, but that extra 10, 15 minutes meant, you know, a lot to them. And then it, it meant a lot to me too. Yeah. I was like, okay, cool. Like I, I could have missed this. So. Yeah. You know, when it comes to calling, I think, you know, maybe I should have said this in the beginning, but it's such a, it's such a big thing to think about, you know, and I, I can, I could understand why some people are like, I have no clue. Cause some of it could be like. I just don't know if I'm ready to say I know what it is because it's such a big deal. Um, and for um, some of you who are probably watching this going, like, I, don't know, like, I don't go to church. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Like every human has at the very least a curiosity to what role they play, what bigger picture are they, are they in, you know, and a calling or your calling, a calling is really just the, that's what it is. It's your role in the big picture. You know, I would encourage you that if you haven't already, if you, if you go to church, speak to a leader about it. Speak to your pastor. Like, hey, these are some of the things that I've been thinking about, praying about. Here are some of my skills. Like, I'm just, I'm really trying to figure this out. I'll be honest with you. What might come out of that conversation is just, hey, your your calling is to to be you, to do you, to be yourself, to help where you can. And honestly, that is the calling. Again, like I mentioned, I mean, that is what God is calling us to do um, in our own way. Like you said, like what makes me, me? Um, Cause God did make us, you know? And so he, he put all of these things in us to make us uniquely who we are. If you don't go to church, I think I would ask yourself the question, what bigger picture are you in? Like, what role are you playing in that bigger picture? If you've never asked yourself that question before, I think it's definitely worth asking yourself because it's it's really, I think we all have a desire to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. We really do. We all are looking for something bigger to be a part of. And that is your calling. That is a calling, is to want, wanting to look and be a part of something bigger than yourself. So I know that, you know, if, a podcast episode isn't going to cover, and again, this is not meant to cover everything. This is now the uh, the calling Bible, right? Yes, like, you yeah. can just make this into a book. So, <laughs> chapter one. This is the introduction. Yeah. Um, but at the very least, this, this podcast episode, I hope, will begin a conversation, not just you with yourself, but you with your friends and people you trust on on what that is, like to look for it, to be intentional, and and seek it. Now, I'm I'm saying this as somebody who. Again, I believe I believe I know what my calling is, where my gifts, my giftings and callings kind of like intersect. 
but it looks different than what I thought it was going to look like when I was younger. But who knows? Maybe in 10, 15 years, I'm looking back at this and going, it's now different now than what it was, you know, and that's very yeah. possible. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's called life. Like we mature, like people change, you know, like I've, I change, like we change, we evolve, we mature. And so I don't know if there's anything else you want to add to any of that. No, I think that's all good. I, I think, yeah, that's kind of the important thing to know is that um, you're calling, maybe you're calling for a season. Yeah. You know, like I've had so many, like, uh, you know, like it, it's kind of funny, like when you look at the church world, like we were kind of like the the next generation. Yeah. And then we keep thinking we're like the next generation until a certain point, like all things in age, you're not the next generation. Yeah, anymore. you're definitely kind not. of like the, the generation or like yeah. the old generation, <laughs> you know, like your role becomes something different where yeah. you used to look up for mentors, which you should always do. Now people are looking to you yeah. to be your mentee. And it's like, whoa, when did that happen? Yeah. You know, when and and you then start to realize, oh my goodness, this was the position that people I was looking up to. Yeah. That, what have they must have felt to be like, why are they looking up to me? Right. I don't have it figured out. And I think those are the things that draw people to you is when you can be authentic to say, like, I don't know what it is. I just I really like that guy. I want to know more about him and your your authenticity becomes your approachability yeah you know what i mean like I like that oh like yeah I, I don't know i just resonate with him yeah you know and again you're gonna resonate with people that i would have no chance resonating with yeah and i'm gonna resonate with people that you have no chance right. of resonating same with your workplaces you, you talked about being there for a reason you're going to reach people that nobody else in your church community yeah. is going to be able to reach. Right. And so how are you being, um, how are you being honoring in those relationships? How are you being, um, you know, uh, um, uh, accountable to those relationships? And, uh, and yeah, so that, that's all I got though. That's a lot though. It's good. Good it's job, Eli. Oh, thanks. <laughs> hey, listen, again, this is not meant to cover everything. This is just something to kind of start that conversation, you with yourself, you with your friends, your leaders, your pastors, your bosses, because I think it's an important question to ask yourself is what picture are you playing a role of? Like, what does that picture look like? Do you want to be a part of something bigger? I say all of us will say yes to that. And asking those questions and finding your place in that is important, especially when it comes to church, when it comes to God, what God is calling you to do in your life. I think more than ever, the most important thing is to open yourself up to God's voice. And when you hear that voice, be obedient and follow that voice. As long as you do that, there'll be grace there for you to, to figure it out, whatever it is that God is calling you to do, honestly. So again, thanks to Eli and Jana for opening up their spot. Letting me use this as my chop shop here this week. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel. I'm on podcasts as well. You can Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Make sure you follow me. And more than anything, guys, comment. Let me know what is your gift or calling. Do you know what that is? Do you struggle with that? Or are you like 100% sure and you know exactly what God is calling you to do? I want to hear that as well. So make sure you guys comment below. Love to hear from you. Can't wait to see you to next episode. Till next time, peace out.